What's up, guys? This is Bug Hunt. Uh, I'm your host for the evening, Ryan Smith. No, just kidding. Uh, what's up, guys? This is just another uh, vlog, an episode of Bug Hunt, where I uh, shoot the shit with you and uh, talk about subjects. And tonight's subject is going to be my new ride. Those of, you, those of you that know me, or follow my Twitter, or Facebook, or just know me personally, know that I have purchased a 1995 Jeep Wrangler. Now, this Jeep is my fifth vehicle in six years no seven years of driving hmm six and a half years of driving um my first vehicle was a 1995 that's funny i just realized that uh lincoln continental my second vehicle was a 1998 chevy blazer my third vehicle was a scion tc my fourth vehicle was my technical current vehicle, which is a 2010 Corolla LE lease. And now it's going to be a 1995 Jeep Wrangler SE, automatic three-speed. Um, many people have asked me, you know, why did I buy a Jeep Wrangler when there are so many other different things I could have bought, got or bought? Um, well, a little bit of a backstory. My first car I had for... <laughs> Uh, like five months after I got my license in August of my first year of owning it and my, my license I was driving in sandwich on the way home from a uh, drive-in movie going to drop a friend off from uh, Sea Cadets and it was a really I I really wish I remembered the name of the road because if I told you the name of the road you'd probably be like oh yeah no shit uh, but it was a really windy road and there are, to this day, I drove it about a month ago, and there still are not any uh, reflectors on the road or uh, lights or of any kind. And what happened that night was uh, my back end got out from under me when I was taking a turn. There was dirt or gravel or something on the road. The police agreed with me on that. And my back end got out from under me, and I spun around backwards and hit a tree. Uh, given the age of the vehicle uh, and the miles on it, the insurance company totaled it. So then I got a Blazer, and then again, the Scion TC, and then the Corolla, and now I have a Jeep. My lease is up in May, so I wanted to buy a vehicle and get it get it done, get it, you know, own it. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my parents. They helped put up uh, technically 40% of the dough needed to purchase it, and I'm paying them back. Um, so, why a Jeep Wrangler? Well, I'm a big believer and fan of the saying that uh, a what you own for a car or a truck, but we'll just say car, because everybody talks about, oh, I got my car fixed, even though they own a truck. Um, I believe that a car is an extension of who you are, your personality, what you like to do, um, and all that jazz. Now, I look at it a couple of different ways. The first way is I've been driving a car for the past... Uh, four years, I'm sick of it. I really am. Now, for a, for the type of car that it is, the Toyota Corolla never let me down. I've owned it for three years. Again, a lease. I never had any trouble with it. I never got stuck in the snow, ever. I mean, I have, or had, ABS, uh, traction, traction control, and vehicle stability control, so that probably helped a little bit there, but I never got stuck in any snow except for when trying to get out of my driveway when there was a foot and a half of snow two years ago. You know, duh, it's a car. Um, but for a car, it was, it was fine. I, I just can't stand cars. I'm not a tall person. Um, I could stand to lose 30 pounds or so, but I'm not a big guy. So it's not like uh, it, it, it was a cramped, cramped quarters. I just don't like having a car. Mainly because I'm limited on what I can do with it and where I can go. I like being able to go in a trail. I like being able to go on sand and have fun with it. <clears throat> Excuse me, if I want to. Uh, I like the freedom that a four-wheel drive vehicle has to offer. So then you say, oh, well, why didn't you get like a Ford Explorer or an SUV of some kind? Text message. Or an SUV of some kind. Well, to be quite frank with you, I loved my Blazer when I had it. There was just uber uber amounts of problems with it um the entire brake system had to be replaced the transmission was going good whatever um i wanted something with personality i wanted something a little unique 
Now, the Jeep that I got happens to have a 3-inch lift and 33-inch tires. That I did not plan on getting. I, I was content with a stock Jeep. Um, but I wanted something that had a lot of personality to it. And I think the Jeep Wrangler, the Jeep Cherokee, and a couple other vehicles really fit that bill. And um, I'm happy with my purchase. Um, it's a 95. It does not have ABS brakes. It does not have power windows. It does not have power locks. It does not have an airbag, which that's the only thing I'm kind of eh, about. Um, as I mentioned before, it, it has a three inch lift on it. It has big tires. I will probably be buying some tires just to replace the big ones so I don't wear them down because I looked online and the tires that came with it are about one third of the way used. So they're probably gonna last me another year and a half solid use. But those tires are like $650 a piece, so I want those to last a while. That's like the basically what I paid for the vehicle on its own. Excuse me while I check this text message. Hmm. I'm sure I'll edit that out in post. Um, so anyway... Um, my Jeep is, as I said before, in 1995. It's the SE. I looked up on the Carfax. I paid for a Carfax report, not from Carfax, from another, you know, provider. Um, it has 132 and change thousand miles on it, which for a 95 Jeep Wrangler is not that bad. It's had two owners before me, which is good. Not that many owners. Um, the second owner, uh, is the one who modified my Jeep. Um... It's a straight six, 4.0 liter. It has 182 horsepower. Um, the condition of the Jeep for a 95 interior wise is pretty good. I mean, I really need to clean the seats. I mean, they're not like outdoor dirty, but they, they could be cleaned or put a seat cover. But I'm, I like keeping things as stock as possible. I love the design of the earlier Jeeps, which is why I'm happy I found a 95 and not a uh, 96 or more. Uh, because in, in 96, they redid the, uh, the you know, the center console and everything. Uh, in the pictures at the end of this video, you'll see how the dash is laid up. I love the dash and the steering wheel. Um, the undercarriage, when I test drove it and took it away for it, you know, to be looked at, as in when I test drove it, I took it and drove it and then parked it and looked at it thoroughly. I can't stand people to just drive it and go, yep, I like it. Look at the vehicle you're test driving. But... Um, there is some rust, and when I say rust, the people who owned the Jeep before me clearly either A, lived in in an area where they salt the roads continuously in the summer, in the wintertime, or most likely they took it four-wheeling. Can't be helped, it's a Jeep, it's lifted, has big tires on it. Um, it's not bad. I'm very particular when it comes to buying... <laughs> A lot of things but a vehicle and I don't accept rust if it's at a certain point or more and this one passed my seal of approval um, upon further inspection when I've had a lot more time to look at it you know when I'm not under the gun for a test drive would I have still have bought it yes um, the muffler uh, I kind of I'm not going to say I destroyed it, but upon looking at it and seeing how far rusted out it is, I mean, mufflers go. I mean, mufflers are exposed to the environment a lot more than most of the vehicle. Mufflers aren't that expensive. I can get a cherry bomb and a, and a pipe kit for, you know, 50, 60 bucks total. Muffler isn't that big of a deal. Um, brake lines, um, you know, the U-joints, the axle, all of those show signs that, hey, this is a 95. This truck is almost 20 years old, but... For a Jeep Wrangler, which you know people can beat the shit out of, you know that they have fun with it, it's in, it's in okay condition. It's good. Um, I'll be happy. I mean, I want this Jeep to last me as long as possible, considering what it is. But I would be happy with two years out of this Jeep. If, if, if you told me that this Jeep will last you until X miles slash, you know, two years from now, I would say, all right, fine. Um, that being said... I could probably put about a thousand dollars into this Jeep right now and have it be almost perfect. I plan with my next paycheck, I don't have any major bills. I'm going to be, you know, getting an engine tune up, getting a lube job done, not the fun kind. Um, just kidding. Um, 
alignment, balance, and oil change. Even though I looked at the oil and it looks like it was changed about a thousand miles ago, I still want to change it myself just so I know where it stands because there is no oil sticker on it. Um, so yeah, I think that for $2,000, this Jeep, I mean, that's the tires alone, but I think this Jeep is going to last me quite a long time. Uh, when I say that, again, I'm hoping for two years. I'd settle for probably nothing less than two years. You know, Jeeps, uh, at least this kind of Jeep, not the Jeep Cherokees, uh, the Grand Cherokees, that is. Um, Jeep Wranglers and the actual Cherokee model, which is like the boxy kind that are no longer made. You know, they have a straight six. Their frame is very, very tough. They're, the engines themselves are bulletproof. The transmissions... They either have something really bad go wrong or nothing go wrong at all. So let's hope I'm, I'm that second category. Um, so I sacrificed a lot when it came to safety and features going from, you know, in all respects, a brand new car to a 95 Jeep Wrangler. So this is another reason why people are asking me, hey, why'd you do that? And like I said before, part of it is the freedom knowing that I can do whatever I want. I can go for wheeling. I can go to the beach and have some fun. I know that if it snows anything more than four or five inches, again, even though the Corolla did an excellent job, um, I know that I'll be perfectly fine. I have a foot, almost two feet of ground clearance, which is pretty cool. I, have a, I think I have 16 inches, 17 inches of ground clearance from the bottom of the axle or drivetrain, not the top of the vehicle uh, bumper, but the drivetrain itself to the bottom of the floor. Um, I also love the personality it has. I mean, this the Jeep looks badass. It, it's a fun thing to own. Driving it, I will be honest, uh, it's not perfect in the sense that right now it has a hard top on it. It came with a soft top. I have no fucking idea how to put it together. It's in the garage. It's in the shed. It's not going to move from the shed. Um, I have no idea how to put it on. And, um, I'd love to, but, you know, I'm the kind of guy where, yeah, owning a Jeep, if I know that I'm going to be gone for the day and I'm going to go have fun or whatever, yeah, I'll, I'll take the hard top off, but, um, the soft top's going to stay in the shed. But, um, when you're on the highway and you go faster than 40, 45, the hard top whistles from the top two corners, and I believe that's because of the weather stripping is the original weather stripping that came with the vehicle and it's pretty pretty tired it needs to be replaced um, that and I think the hard top is like a quarter of an inch off on one side but minor things that can be fixed I don't mind the whistle and to be honest even if it didn't whistle one thing I'm gonna have to get used to is the road noise I knew about it ahead of time I've driven in a couple of Jeeps that are, that a few friends of mine own um, some people hate it some people can't stand Jeep Wranglers or anything like them because of the road noise. I don't care. I'm going to put my sound system in it. Um, and you know what? That's part of the part of the fun of owning a Jeep Wrangler. Um, you sacrifice, you know, sedan quietness for <laughs> road and wind noise. I mean, half the time I'll be having my windows open anyway. And yes, during the winter time, people always tell me, oh, it's you're going to be cold. Well, <laughs> I checked the heat on this thing. And let me tell you, I'm actually very impressed even in my brand new Corolla 2010, the heat took a little bit, you know, from when you start the vehicle, obviously the engine has to warm up. Um, a cold start this morning, which it was actually like 38 degrees out this morning. It was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I start the Jeep, and by the time I'm out of my driveway, it's blowing, pr not hot, but pretty warm air. Enough to get, you know, get get the, the, the circulation going, the blood going. And then by the time I was, you know a mile down the road it was hot air so as far as i'm concerned the heater freaking rocks and from what i've seen on the forums um that's not it's it's common in that year um so anyway driving it with big tires i like the look i like the feel i like the fact that i know i can do whatever i want my problem is like i said before they're six six hundred and fifty dollar a piece tires that are a little under halfway worn I, as much as I'm probably going to this summer, I don't want to use up those tires very quickly, um, and the road noise from them, and I'm sure the gas mileage, uh, is down, a, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit, 
because of those tires. Speaking of gas mileage, my Corolla, which I will again, you know, bow to it, went 450 miles on a 14 gallon gas tank. That is insane. And that's me driving almost perfect with the exception of accelerating to go on the highway or beating some asshole who refuses to go in the passing lane. Um, right now I'm at a little bit below a half a tank and I've gone 150 miles, which for a six cylinder uh, Jeep Wrangler, which has <laughs> probably some of the worst uh, aerodynamics on the highway and uh, you know the tires and everything and the lift kit, I would if you told me that I would, you know, driving decently, with the exception of a couple of a couple of instances, if you told me that I would get 200 to 240 miles on a tank of gas, that's acceptable in my book. That's what my Blazer got. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know that I'm going to be paying more in gas, um, but at the same time, it's better than a lease payment, you know. Um, I'm really happy, and I know that I owe, I owe Toyota some money, and I owe my parents some money, but it's really, really nice knowing that I literally own my vehicle. I don't have to pay any money on it, except to my parents. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, a creditor calling me. I own it. It's mine. I can do whatever I want to it. And there are quite a thing, quite a few, uh, quite a bit of... Uh, quite a few things I am going to do to it. I have to put my sound system in it, um, which is going to be a little tricky for the rear speakers. I can't fit my radio in it, uh, unfortunately. I will be doing... I posted a review on my old YouTube channel, but it has since been deleted, so I will post another review on it. Um, I own a Pioneer 610 uh, GPS navigation uh, deck, Double Din. Double Din will not fit in my Jeep. So I'll be going back to Alpine's iPod dock. Um, so yeah, my 95 Jeep Wrangler is my current vehicle. It hopefully will be in my possession for at least a couple of years. I'm willing to put the money into it that I have to, um, to keep it running that long. Um, but I have a feeling, with the exception of some minor things like the muffler and maybe some brakes and an engine tune-up and you know obvious things, I have a feeling that this Jeep, if I treat it properly, which I will, will last me a decent amount of time. So hopefully that'll work out for me. So anyway, uh, this is BSG Trek Fan 88 for another episode of Bug Hunt. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, please put them in the uh, doobly-doo below. Um, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, the Avengers comes out this Friday. I cannot wait for the Avengers. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit right now, actually. You know... Hulk, Iron Man, uh, obviously Thor, um, Captain America. I mean, we've been watching these movies now for, what, five years? Six years? Iron Man? We'll go with six years. I mean, that's a long time. And we're finally here. This is going to be it, the Avengers movie. I cannot fucking wait. I mean, I'm not a comic book fan at all. I mean, I've read maybe four comic books in all my life. You know what? I'm not that I'm not that kind of fan. I appreciate comic books for what they are. I really do. I'm just not a comic book guy. Um, but when it comes to the films, not all of them have been great. But leading up to the Avengers has been a really fun thing. So I cannot wait to see the Avengers this Friday. I'm off this Friday. I'm going to a 6:55 showing in Hyannis. Can't wait. Uh, we also get Battleship, which. I'm going to tell you right now, I know Battleship sucks. I know Film Brain from That Guy With The Glasses did a review. I know other people who have done reviews. I don't care. I'm going to see Battleship for two reasons. One, the dude from Generation Kill, who I forget his name right now, is in it, and he's a great actor. But mainly, two, I'm a big naval history buff. Um, I don't know everything, but I know quite a bit about World War II, World War One. you know, Battleships, uh, Dreadnoughts. I have... Well, a whole bunch of books on it, and I, you know, I study that kind of shit, and I cannot wait to see an Iowa-class battleship on the big screen, even if it's for a minute, firing everything it has at it. The sea Whiz, Tomahawks, cruise missiles, 5-inch anti-aircraft guns, 16-inch shells. To see that in a theater, oh, I can't wait. Um, we also, of course, have the final entry in the Dark Knight series this year. Uh, we have Men in Black 3. Big, big summer. Um, I'll be doing 
something new this year. Hopefully some buddies of mine, yeah, I'm talking to you, William, Mark, and Greg Gagnon, maybe Kevin, um, doing uh, midnight as many midnight screenings on a Saturday night or Friday night as we can uh, get in this summer and do a review in the car. Uh, similar to how the Cinema Snob does it, if you've seen Brad Jones's website, he he goes to every midnight screening in the summertime that he and his buddies can get to, and then they do a review right in the car with a video camera. I'm gonna have to figure something out, but hopefully I can get that worked out. If you're interested and you're watching this video, let me know, and uh, we'll work something out. Anyway, this video's gone 20 minutes now, so this is BSG Trek Fan 88 signing off.